From Seed to Plant. This week we're going to be reading a story about how a seed turns into a plant. One of the things that we'll be talking about are text and graphic features. So we talk about this quite a lot and the importance of looking at the illustrations and reading the diagrams and the labels so that we can get some more information and it helps us understand what we're reading. So an author often includes text and graphic features. So text would be the words, graphic features would be the pictures to help the reader understand more about the text. Labels are an example of a text feature. So labels would be what the words showing what the pictures are showing. Pictures, charts, and diagrams are examples of graphic features. You can use a chart like the one below to list the types of features you find in a selection. Then you can tell why you think the author used each one. So why do you think in a nonfiction piece, why do you think an author would have different diagrams with labels? It helps us understand what we're reading. So we're going to be talking about one type of a life cycle. So when you look up at a giant tree, it is hard to imagine that it was once a tiny seed. It was though, the seed was in the ground. Sunlight and rain helped it to grow. The tree was small at first, but then it grew and grew. After years of growing, it became a full grown tree. When seeds fall from the tree, more trees will grow. This is the tree's life cycle. Many plants grow this same way. You will read more about how plants grow in From Seed to Plant. So one of the things that we'll be talking about once again is a life cycle, how we start a, a life cycle. For example, a seed. What do we do with the seed? We plant it in the ground or maybe in nature, it just falls and buries itself into the ground. Um, all the trees and the plants that are growing in the world didn't come from people planting all of them. Um, sometimes they just plant themselves by the wind or maybe an animal carries that seed and drops it and it gets buried in, this, in the soil. And then um, as time goes and it rains, it, it's getting water, the sun is shining, it's getting sunlight and the sea, the plant just seems starts to grow. And then the cycle starts all over again when more seeds drop from the plant and get themselves in the soil. And once again, the rain and the sun causes that seed to grow and that cycle repeats over and over again. So this is this is actually a book that you could find in the library by Gail Gibbons. She was a very curious child. Her parents say that she always asked a lot of questions. She also loved to draw and paint. One of her first jobs was doing artwork for a children's television show. After that, she wrote her first book. Since then, she has written more than 135 informational books. She loves her job because she still likes to ask questions. She finds the answers and then writes about them in her books. So this is a type of nonfiction. It's informational text. It's giving us facts about a topic. And as you read, you're looking for pictures and labels, facts and details, diagrams that help explain the topic. And you'll notice that this is a little bit different type of nonfiction because usually nonfiction we can tell it's it's nonfiction, it's giving true facts because it's more photographs. However, this, uh, this story is not real photographs, but it still is an informational text and it's giving true facts. So here we go from seed to plants. And we are looking for the answer to how do plants grow and change? Most plants make seeds. A seed contains the beginning of a new plant. Seeds are different shapes, sizes, and colors. All seeds grow into the same kind of plant that made them. Many plants grow flowers. Flowers are where most seeds begin. And if you look, it gives, it tells us the names of the flowers in the picture. So a tulip, a daisy, 
a rose, corn, pea, buttercup. So once again, it's important to read the labels in the pictures. A flower is made up of many parts. Now we're not going to go on to the next page until we actually look at the diagram of the flower and we read each of these text boxes. So these would be text fe features, okay? So a sepal, which is right here, at the bottom of the pistil are tiny egg cells called ovules. So you can see these circular parts right here are the ovules. In the center of the flower is the pistil. Okay, so you can see that right in the center, the pistil. The sticky part at the top of the pistil is the stigma. Okay, so right there, it's all sticky. Okay, that's where the pollen is. This is the petal of the flower. The stamens make yellow powder called pollen. Okay. And the parts of the flower around the pistil are the stamens. So this is a stamen. So how does the diagram of the flower help you better understand the information on this page? Well, if the author had just said, these are ovules, this is a pistil, this is a stigma, these are all new words for us. They're maybe a little bit unfamiliar to us and it might be hard for us to picture what they are. So the author did a really nice job of drawing the parts of the plant, labeling them and explaining what each part does. Before a seed can begin to grow, a grain of pollen from the stamen must land on the stigma at the top of the pistil of a flower like itself. This is called pollination. Pollination happens in different ways. Often wind blows pollen from flower to flower. Bees, other insects, and hummingbirds help pollinate too. While they visit flowers for their sweet juice called nectar, pollen rubs onto their bodies. Then they carry the pollen to another flower where it comes off onto its pistil. Okay, so this paragraph has some words that I've read for the first time in the diagram on the previous page. So now they're sounding a little bit familiar because we've already looked at them. So for example, stamen, stigma, and pistil. You may not remember exactly what they mean, so you might wanna go back to the previous page and say, oh, that's right, the sticky part at the top of the pistil is the stigma right? And what do the stamens do? They make pollen. And remember in this page back here, it talked about different ways that pollen can spread. If a pollen grain from a flower lands on the pistil of the same kind of flower, it grows a long tube through the pistil, pistil into an ovule. Remember these were the ovules here. This is the beginning of a seed. The seeds grow inside the flower even as the flower begins to die. As the seeds become bigger, a fruit or pod grows around them. The fruit or pod protects the seeds. Why do you think the seeds need protection? Okay, and there's a lot of important stuff inside that seed. And if it's not protected, it could disintegrate or fall apart but that protective coating around the seed is going to help pr protect it and keep it safe until it can be planted into the soil and create a new plant. When the fruit or pod ripens, it breaks open. The seeds are ready to become new plants. Some seeds fall to the ground around the base of the plant where they will grow. Some pods or fruits open and the seeds pop out. Sometimes when birds eat berries, they drop the seeds. Other seeds fall into streams, ponds, rivers, or the ocean. 
There they travel on the water until they stick to dirt along a shore. The wind scatters seeds. Some seeds have fluff on them that lets them float to the ground like tiny parachutes. Others have wings that spin as they fall. So think about all the ways that we just learned how seeds travel. Okay, think about all those different ways that seeds travel. Seeds can travel by dropping into the soil. The wind can make them go from place to place. Water could make them go from place to place. Do you remember some other ways that seeds can travel? Animals, right? Maybe the animals might eat the seed and then deposit them wherever they end up. Animals help scatter seeds too. They hide acorns and nuts in the ground. Some seeds have hooks that stick to the fur of animals or people's clothes. Later, they drop off onto the ground. Have you seen these before? Sometimes when you're taking a walk in the woods, these burrs get stuck to your pants. And when you get home, you find all these things stuck to your pants. That's a type of seed. Okay, so that's another way that they might travel. They could stick to animals' fur or on our clothing, and we take it from place to place, sometimes without even knowing it. A flower bed or vegetable garden is beautiful. Seeds are planted to grow in the gardens. The seeds come in small envelopes or boxes. Directions explain how to plant the seeds and care for the plants. The beginning of a plant is curled up inside each seed. Food is stored inside the seed too. The seed has a seed coat on the outside to protect it. So once again, before we continue to read, let's really study this diagram. Okay, so this is a picture of the seed. Okay, the food is contained inside the seed and that's what lets it live. It feeds itself. Okay, so this is a bean seed and it's lined with a coating, which is hard. If you've ever put a bird seed in a, in a bird feeder, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like a sunflower seed, it has a nice um, strong coating on the outside. And if you were to break it apart, you would see a softer inside and if you wait long enough, you can actually see the beginning of the plant inside the seed before it breaks through. Eventually it will break through when that seed coat softens. What do you think would soften that seed coat? Well, it would be some type of water or wetness or moisture. A seed will not sprout until certain things happen. First, it must be on or in the soil. Then it needs rain to soak the seed and soften the seed coat. When the sun shines and warms the ground, the seed coat breaks open and the seed begins to grow. This is called germination. A root grows down into the soil. The root takes in water and minerals from the soil for food. Okay, so we see this part of the plant coming up out of the ground. What we don't see are the roots growing down into the ground. So the roots kind of help feed that seed so that it continue to grow upward. Okay, also that those roots keep that plant anchored. So when the wind blows or it starts to rain, that, that plant doesn't fly away. So up grows a shoot. So the stem that's growing up, that's the shoot. Green leaves grow up from the shoot toward the sun. The plant grows bigger and bigger. The leaves make food for the plant from the water and minerals in the soil, the sunlight and the air all around the plant. So you can see the green leaves and the shoot. Here's that seed coat that is still intact. And remember that that plant was already starting to grow inside the seed and it has now come up out of the earth and the roots are growing down into the soil. Finally, the plant is full grown. Buds on the plant open into flowers where new seeds will grow. Okay, so remember, remember that diagram way back when 
of the flowers, right? And you saw all those different parts inside that flower, like the pistil and the stamen, which is where all of the new pollen is created and then it transfers to the next area to grow a new plant. Many of the food people eat are seeds, fruits, and pods. They are full of nutrition, vitamins and minerals, and they are tasty too. So look at all of these vegetables that we eat every day. And remember that they come from the ground. They started with a tiny seed. So here's a, a project. We're going to be doing a couple different plant projects this week. So look, look out for those. Um, but one way we can do this, and this is really kind of neat so that you can see what's happening both on the top and what's happening under the ground. So if you find a clean glass jar, we take a piece of black construction paper and roll it up. We put it inside the jar. We're gonna fill the jar with water. We're gonna put the bean seeds between the black paper and the glass, and you're gonna put the jar in a warm place. In a few days, the seeds will begin to sprout. Watch the roots grow down and the shoots will grow up. So look at, you can see all of the different parts. Now, what do you notice they left out of that project? What do we normally plant a seed in? That's right, we plant it in soil. But do you think just putting these seeds in a jar with the paper to keep them in place. Basically, that's what that paper is doing. It's holding them in place so we can see them. And then we fill it with water. That'll be interesting to see if that really does work without the soil. Okay. Uh, once they've sprouted, okay, so we want to make sure that they have roots, right? And they have, what, what were these called again? Shoots that are coming up, then we want to actually take those seeds and carefully put them into soil so they can continue to grow, okay? Because without that soil, they're not going to grow for long. We're going to carefully remove the small plants from the glass jar, place them in the soil, covering them up to the base of their shoots, and then we water them and watch them grow. So if you don't have a glass jar, another way we can do this is in a Ziploc bag, and we can actually tape that to the window so that it can get some sunlight. Okay, so that is the story from seed to plant. Enjoy.